This is a Ready Nest 2100. Pretty cheap empty chassis that I bought. These two have five terabytes in there. These two are empty. So for now I've got a five terabyte RAID 0 array. This thing is cool. Um, it comes with Ready Nest 4, which is horrible and doesn't recognize a lot of drives, but you can figure out how to flash it to Ready Nest 6, which is cool, modern, recognize pretty much every drive, has everything, apps and FTPs and VPNs and whatever you need and a lot of stuff that you don't need. I like it, but it is loud. So what we're going to do is check out the fans and put in a bunch of these fans. These are Sunon something something, uh, link in the usual places, quoted as 12.3 dBA. I don't believe it, I ran it off a little power supply, I can clearly hear it, but this thing has one, two, three, four fans here and two fans here, as we'll see in a moment. That is six fans. 12 dBA times four is 18 dBA plus two more. Let's say it's going to be roughly 20 dBA. That should be below the background noise of this street noise you hear right now. This thing will be quiet. Um, right now it is too loud to have in the room uh, and do any other stuff. It's just, this is for a server rack. It's a great, reliable machine. It hasn't failed anything. No software fails. It's super reliable. It's pretty fast if you put in the right drives. It's just loud and I can't have it. So here we go. There we go. That is how loud it is. Obviously these fans will calm down after it's booted. But this is this is very 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 loud. Voltage. Five volts. Wah, wah, wah. These are five volt fans. Five volt fans. These fans are blowing outwards. Good to know. It's blowing quite a bit. And maybe this heatsink should be should be upgraded a little bit. I already upgraded the main RAM. There's two gigs in there. The one gig is not really enough to run OS 6. That's probably why these chassis were never upgradable to OS 6. Plug in two gigs, install Readiness OS 6. This power supply looks original, which is a bad thing because this fan will probably be very loud. It doesn't make any sense that this fan cools the entire power supply and then the, all of that comes from the other six. Okay, so this is normal running level. Loud, 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 loud. I want to see if the 12 volts actually goes off when I switch the unit off. There we go. 12 volt goes off. Cool. So we can use that to power our fans. These fans are Crown hang on, AGE 04020B12M, Crown Electronics from Taiwan. Uh, they say they're 12 volts, so we have to measure. I may have missed something. Give me some power. That sound is not good. I don't like that sound. At all. I have 
to test that too, what's going on with the power supply. This power supply is known for blowing up, so we may want to replace it while we're in here. So yeah, the yellow has 5 volts. The red has 10.6. Also, there is only 4 mounting holes for 2 fans. Where, of course, I might get in trouble not being able to fit 4 fans side by side. And look, now I've got a voltage of 4. Interesting. So the PWM is actually on here. I've got a steady five on the on the yellow line, but only four here. Let's see how these little fans do. Probably noise-wise, you're not going to hear a lot because this power supply actually makes more noise than the fan, but we need to know which way she blows. So, let's connect the minus. Let's connect the pluses. Here we go. whoop de doo Channel 1, 12 volts. Let's limit you to 0.5 amp just to be sure and here we go Did you hear that nothing air comes out this side towards you from the label so because we want these fans to suck the air out of the enclosure the label has to face to the back of the NAS So the dual fan has four screws, but it looks like the single fan will actually work in its place. Now the question is if we are going to use only two screws or four, and that needs to be a decision based on noise. If this starts to rattle against the chassis here, then we cannot use them. Let's just try it. All right. We said label outward to the back. Oh, it fits. That is pretty cool. It takes the same screws. Of course. A little bit harder because they're still new. Oh boy. Could it be that easy? I don't believe it. The big worry, of course, is the uh, reporting in the OS of both temperature and fan speed. We wanted to ramp up the 12 volt rail to the full 12 volts, and I have no idea how the algorithm works. Ah, oh, but this fits like a glove. Brilliant. That is actually pretty cool. It's really interesting how readiness reports fan 1 and fan 2, even though there are three PWM control fans. So which one is fan 1 and which one is fan 2? Hmm. Interesting. So, we need to open up this plug, parallel out these wires, shove them in here. So there's these little tabs that have little hooks on them that get stopped. If you push them down, you're able to pull out the wire. Problem is you need three hands. Maybe four. 
There you go. That's how you take them out. Plug. Now you can reuse these, but I would prefer not to. Ah, look at that. Look at that. These are two fans, but they're being soldered here. This one only gets power. And this one indicates its uh, RPM on the yellow wire. Now I get it. That is interesting. So what we should have done is just pull all the yellow wires and then we know what the system does when it doesn't know the RPM. But what we're going to do instead is do the same thing that they did here. We'll actually slice this open because this is probably soldered here, which means we could have left this on, just unsolder it here. Okay, in fact, let's open it right now. Watch me cut myself on camera. This is going to be cool. So, at least the paramedics will have video evidence of how I got to be on the floor. Bleeding out. This is incredible. This is incredible. Look at this. It's supposed to be a professional plug from a professional company. And it's soldered just the way I would. Yeah, we're going to be soldering. We're opening this, forgetting about that. Why? Yeah. I'm still confused. So there's six fans, but only three yellow wires, and the OS reports two fans. So now the question is, if we unplug this bad boy here, what is the system going to do? Is it going to run it at maximum or not? All right, so this is our newly built non-PWM fan. interesting all these headers say three 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 which doesn't make much sense because the OS shows you fan one and two they do run so they're running at full tilt I'm going to say these two and these two output roughly the same air. Here we go. Let's see what it says. Thank 
Foreman. Fan one is not working. UPS warning and the UPS not connected. Fan one is running at zero RPM. Fan two thinks it's running at seventy five hundred RPMs. Interesting. <coughs> Need to output a little bit more, boy. This is actually the loud fan now. I'm gonna pull this plug and see what the OS reports. Interesting. Ah, fan two, zero RPM. Okay, let's replace these two and see what happens. But I want this fan to draw in cold air from somewhere. People people rag on these power supplies that they burn out. But where the hell can they get cold air from? Okay, I think I found out how the airflow goes. So, all six of these fans are sucking air out of the drive. Um, and I thought it could only come from there, but obviously it's coming from these holes in the, in the chassis all the way from the front. So through the drives, the idea is that the fans are sucking air through the drive bays over the CPU and out. However, the power supply, by the way, be careful when opening the power supply, this still contains energy. That cap is probably full. The power supply, and, and other YouTubers have noticed this, this is insane. This is built completely full. And this poor little fan here is trying to suck in air. And this is supposed to go through the entire power supply out the back and then it gets sucked out here. I don't understand how any air can get through this power supply from that piddly fan. I'm thinking to stop this fan entirely because it's just making noise blowing air into these coils here. It doesn't make any sense. I'm going to open up this side And I'm going to let the case air come through, go over the power supply, just like this, and get sucked out by these two, four, six. I'm literally sitting here, guys, redesigning the power supply thermally because, you know what? I think we're going to have to run a thermal can on this. All right, new plan. That's it. I'm not going to put the cover back on. Do not do this at home. We're going to put all six fans in here. We're going to put the power supply back. And this is a little trick I learned from David EV Block. We're going to close this thing with cling film or something. And then we're going to run a thermal analysis. I've got a flare camera. We're going to look at this. This doesn't make any sense. Obviously, we know that it runs. Yeah. And I think these wires are the fan wires. I want to do an analysis with and without that fan in place. I don't think it makes any difference. All the fans have been built in. Power supply is in. And even notice how nicely the cable from the power supply is completely blocking the power supply fan. Here we have a pure thermal, which is an open source webcam based on the FLIR module. And we'll see how it distributes the heat. Here's the main processor. 
There seems to be more heat than that little chip over there. Interesting. The RAM is warm. Oh, there we have the processor warming up. Interestingly, the power supply is fairly cool. Hmm. It's still booting. The LED is still blinking. So I can't log in yet. Do we see cool spots around the fan? Not really. There's no real warm spot there. There is nothing really hot in the power supply. I suppose the power supply gets a lot hotter if you would actually have one, two, three, four drives in the bay. The only thing really heating up is that little chippy over there. Oh, that's the network chip. See, there's two of them. One cable is plugged in, the other one isn't. And the left network chip is very, very, very busy. There's a cable over here that we can easily cut, which would turn off that fan. I could also just take it out. It would then still run, but it wouldn't generate heat. I want to know where the sound comes from, really. Yep, it's the power supply fan. It's making a hell of a racket. These fans are quiet. The air coming out is warming up. I mean, the fan is obviously keeping its immediate area cool, but it's it's sucking in nothing but maybe even lukewarm air. So. I could be mistaken, but I actually think it's got more air going through the power supply now without the fan than previously with the fan. Okay. Network. Power connected. That's I don't like that sound. Oh, that's a lot quieter, isn't it? So, yeah, that loud fan was the power supply fan. These are my 12 dB fans. Still fairly loud. Same as before. See, this area is still cold. Because there's nothing going on there. That fan was making a lot of noise to pump air around, essentially. This is still warm. I've seen videos of other power supplies on the internet where all the caps were popped. These seem to be okay. But I only have two 2.5 two inch drives in here, not four 3.5 inch drives. I know nothing of the history of this power supply. Maybe new. Fans are not working. No. Will it turn down the fans? Probably not. Right. 
temperatures in the system are pretty much the same as they used to be before. And move this over here. CPU used to be around 50 degrees. Of course, it just started up. Uh, CPU is really cool. The fans are actually putting out quite a lot of air. I may have to repin them to 5 volts. Compared to that, the power supply is a lot warmer. CPU 30 degrees. Whatever that is, 33. That's the network chip. Chip is warm. Power supply is thirty degrees. Not a problem. Thirty five degrees. So really the only thing that's extremely hot in here is our network chip. <laughs> I would have thought. So what I think that we'll be doing is turning these fans down just a little bit. Yeah. The air coming out here is it's just not hot at all. Alright, it's the next day. I have put a few grommets behind the fans to decouple them acoustically from the chassis. That didn't seem to do very much. But you can see here that uh, we've been running for a good four hours now, three and a half, four hours. Temperatures are very stable and way below what I'm used to. Um, so that means that these fans are actually currently moving a lot more air than I used to before. Uh, power supply is at 42 degrees system itself it's doing very well network chip is probably hot the air coming out is, is essentially cold that's room temperature obviously i decided to test this all in winter i should have done in the summer but that's an ambient difference of about 10 maybe 20 degrees the only thing i'm really worried about is this power supply but it's Power supply is at 40 degrees. Um, so I don't think we're missing this fan over here. I really don't. That fan couldn't get any air in. Um, all we really miss now is the sound of the fan. But clearly that side of the power supply is using the most power, or actually dissipating the most power. And... Um, I think we're going to have to try to put the fans down to 5 volts and see how many decibels we get in that case. 50 directly at the outlets. Forty in front of the camera. Completely uh, uncalibrated, but we're only looking for a difference, right? Alright, day three. We are going to look for 5 volts somewhere. I don't think we'll find it on a header on the motherboard. And I don't know if we find it that we can actually use it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think orange is 3 3. Correct. Yellow is 12. And red is probably 5. Okay. So. 20 seconds in, we found our 5 volts. To make this sort of reversible, I'm going to splice out one of these, make a plug, and plug 1, 2, 3. Um, the red wires out of this in there. The other thing I did try using a power supply is to give the fans 5 volts. And make sure that when you are 
apply the 5 volts, they actually start up. Because they will run at 5 volts if they come down from 12. You don't know for sure if they will run on 5 when it comes from 0. So they need a little extra current to start up. And that appears to be no problem. Ah, by the way, this black thing here is a temperature sensor. Interesting. 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 Why is this so interesting? Could we try to drive the fans from the original fan controller? They are temperature controlled. And it's a, oh, it's a two pin fan. What if we control all six of these from the power supply? Question is, the power supply can actually drive six of them rather than one. But yeah, we should try this. Here, 8.2 volts. All right, this is anything but perfect, but I extended the wire coming from the power supply to a proper plug. Well, proper plug, it's just a header. But no fans at all. Oh my god, maybe I just didn't hear it. This is extremely quiet. Nice! This is extremely quiet. I like it. 35 degrees, 4.5 volt on the fans. This is perfect. I just want to see that start up once more. Because I think they started up with zero fans. As you can see, the network is still on. And this machine supports... the magic packet and we can do a LAN startup. So we go to power, we go to Wacom LAN, 2 millivolts. Starts up, 3.6 volts immediately, 4 volts. Then they're spinning. I just, I didn't hear them. I can hear the little 2.5 inch drive starting. There is air coming out. I can hear the 2.5 inch drive spinning over there in the enclosure. I cannot hear the fans at all. Look at that. 3040B. That 3040B is other background noise. It's actually not this thing. This is right at the front of four fans, guys. I'm worried that maybe this power supply is not able to drive the voltage it wants. If it, if it would really want to go 100%, maybe it's not even able to, to drive it more up than, than 4.5 volt. Before I do that, I had another idea. I've just restarted it. It starts up at 3.6, goes to 4. What I want to know is whether this power supply can drive to 6 fans or whether it's just maxing out. Or maybe it thinks it's not warm enough and we don't need more voltage. So what I want to try is heat up this temperature sensor and see if the power supply commands more voltage. If it doesn't, that means it's on the max. If it does, it means it, it can actually drive the six fans. Now, I don't have to run it for four hours to heat it up. We have other methods. This thing is set to 200 degrees. I'm not going to put it very close. But I want to cook 
the temperature sensor just a little bit. For 50, for 60, for 70, for 80, for 95, 2. Okay, okay, look at that, 6 volts. It can do 7 volts. Good news, everybody. Eight five nine. Fans are spinning up. Damn. Can we do ten volts? Great. I can hear the fans. Eleven. Give me eleven. Okay. Good enough. Result. We just proved that this works. Perfect. We're done. All right, everything is built in, sort of nicely tied up, and we are going for a run. Clearly the power supply is still the hottest part of the system. But 30 degrees, come on, man. We have a CPU temperature, 49 degrees, system 34. That is roughly the same as I had before. 35 degrees power supply, 37 main processor, self calibrating it's what, 45. Fleur says 45. And the NAS itself says 49. And then we're going to box up the power supply, which means the power supply will get hotter. When the power supply gets hotter, it will run the fans just a little faster. And that might be good for our CPU. Yes, a little interim update. We have been running for about 20, 30 minutes. You can see that the first run we did, temperatures actually shot up pretty high. That was with the power supply open. Now that the power supply is closed, the power supply internal temperature probably ramps up a little bit. So the fans will go a little bit faster, which turns the overall system temperature down. Now this is just brilliant. First of all, it shows that the feedback loop is working. Um, I put a PT type sensor on the power supply because we can't see inside it with the uh, thermal camera. And the aluminium enclosure has a certain emissivity that won't, won't give you an ac accurate temperature reading. So we're reading about 30 degrees on the power supply. I'm assuming inside it will be 35, 40. Power supply is controlling the fan speed. And you see the system heading to an equilibrium. The fans are clearly running faster than before. It's still not loud, but it's, it's louder. Which makes me think that I might want to open up the power supply again. Because there's just not enough air going through the power supply 
The previous situation where we had the power supply open was definitely better. For noise. Because the power supply is, is pulling extra air to keep itself cool because it has a blanket on. And maybe we want to take the blanket back off. We just don't want to be able to touch it. But that can be arranged. I'm thinking to keep the top part. And remove the sides. Alright. I have taken the blanket off of the power supply. But I've replaced the plastic. The insulator. And now I am going to put the actual case back on. I'm not sure I can recommend this. I really am not sure. But it is how it was mounted, so... We had grounded metal straight over this before. I've secured this with Captain tape. And there is nothing I can touch like this. So what we are going to do from here... Is have another run. Look at temperatures and see if we can match the first profile. Interim update, we have been running for 15 minutes and you can see in the temperature pattern that we're back to the first one. We seem to be settling in around 45 degrees of temperature on the CPU. Let me see if we can get a direct reading. CPU 45 degrees. Damn, I am good. Previously that was 35 degrees. It's a lot quieter as well. Um, if we go to the 4 hour stat. This is starting to look like not the previous one that would settle down at 35. But the one that settled down at slightly under 50 degrees. So we'll see if we get to 50 degrees. Um, but it's a lot, a lot quieter. I'm, I'm actually um, running a program that hits the database that's running on this thing hard. So, this thing is working for its money right now, and it's quiet. We're at 39 degrees, no, sorry, 39 dBs. The air coming out is reasonable. So what I'm going to assume here is that we are not only running quieter than before, we are now running cooler than before. All right, I have closed everything up. Obviously, you can see that the, uh, the power supply cover has not been mounted. There was a plastic piece under it that I did mount to the top of the power supply. So under here is a plastic layer and then the electronic components. This thing will not flex, and even if it does, it won't hit the power supply. Having said that, is this something I recommend? Is this something I recommend? Probably not. But I want quiet. And I want the power supply to live longer. You see a lot of these power supplies on the internet broken. I'm only running two 2.5 inch drives. That's not a lot of power. Um, although I assume that most of the power goes to the CPU. Maybe not even. Anywho. I'm going to be running a long-term uh, benchmark. I'm running a database tool which is essentially hammering the two drives in here. They are under constant load. And we'll see what it does overnight. Alright. Sit wrap. We have been running for an hour and a half and it looks to be stabilizing. Um, I'm still, yes, I'm still hammering this file server, doing more writes. Um, in the meantime, I have put two 19 inch rack mounts on it. It's going to be built into the enclosure that it's currently on. I'm, I'm calling this done. We are stable at a CPU temperature of just under 40 degrees right now, really good. 
system temperature is coming up a little bit. Um, if you look at the four hour report, so the first one was where we were open using cellophane. The second one was where we closed up the power supply. You see the system temperature, um, sorry, CPU temperature was just about the same. No, it's system temperature, sorry. CPU was the same. System temperature was running cooler um, and you would think it's better, but that was because we covered up the power supply, so the power supply was getting hotter. So actually, um, now the power supply is running cooler, but you're looking at system temperature that seems to be hotter. Um, and I'm going to assert that keeping the power supply cool, cooler, is a good thing. Um, you see how many of these power supplies have grenaded themselves, and um, that is because the fan in the power supply is really completely useless. And it was probably running faster than it should be. So, I'm about to conclude this thing. I'm, I'm going to call it completely done. Um, it's getting put into the rack and it's going back into service. What are the conclusions we can achieve from this? One, uh, the first conclusion is for Netgear. Netgear, of course you buy a power supply straight from the manufacturer. But this is not how you include it in the system. Yeah. Um, you don't give it any possibility to breathe. You let it suck in hot air through a cable that is completely blocking the inlet. So that fan was pumping around hot air um, and wasn't doing anything. Second conclusion, manufacturer of the power supply. What the hell were you thinking? That this one hasn't grenaded himself is a miracle because check YouTube, check the internet. There are many, many, many people who've had to replace the power supply because it grenaded itself. Why does it grenade itself? There is no air path through the thing. Completely not. And then there's this, this tiny little fan, which I'll grant you at a high RPM can move some air, um, but that A, makes it super loud, B, it's still not effective because this air runs into a million capacitors and never gets to the transistors that are actually doing the hard work. So the whole thing just heats up. And the only thing I've done now, um, no, I've actually done two things. I've removed the fan that doesn't really do anything um, because this is a compound problem where the power supply manufacturer hopes that the little bit of air that the fan sucks in is gonna cool this, this jungle of components with no air pass through them. But then Netgear is good enough to let you suck in hot air straight from the CPU um, through a cable bundle that is also blocking it. So the fan is blocked on the outside and the inside. I mean, this is a complete catastrophe. So our solution has been, we remove the internal fan that is apparently only there to make noise. And we removed the shroud from the power supply. Now this is going to be debated in the comments that this is dangerous and what have you. Um, we can we can debate that all day long, but I think that a power su supply that grenades itself and shoots capacitors all through and takes out the building fuse is potentially a bigger problem than covering it with a plastic shroud and another metal box and obviously not keeping it open for people to touch it. Um, we all know that power supplies can really shock you. And most of us in electronics have experienced this firsthand. Yeah, um, I don't like it. What I could do, I could take the metal shroud and I could drill a million holes into it and it would let air through. But, you know, you could also say that in that case you can still touch it. Yeah. Plastic on the inside then also needs to be perforated. Um, I think the solution works. I'm going to put it in a rack. Nothing is going to be put directly on top of it. Nothing is going to push on the metal cover and push it down. Um, so this is going to be safe. And um, the final conclusion is that you need to analyze these things. You need to measure everything. And I'm, I'm putting emphasis on this conclusion because I need to justify to myself why I buy so much measurement equipment. 
there are clear differences. We have entirely optimized the airflow. We have put fans in there that are quieter and when run at a lower voltage are as good as inaudible. And I think the biggest win is that we still have thermal control by using the control signal for the power supply's internal fan. Um, and I would go as far as to say the power supply can control its own temperature better now, now that it has six fans and actual airflow through it. And with that, I think I've praised myself enough now. I thank you for your time. This is my first video. Be gentle in the comments. If you're gentle and nice, I might actually do more. I kind of like this. See you later.